Uh, All right. How long have you been in a band? Uh, probably for about 14 years in collective bands, 14, 15 years, maybe 60. Um, how did you get into underground metal? <laughs> yeah, um, I don't know, uh, Deicide, probably, Deicide, Cannibal Corpse, heard some of that stuff, actually Old Cradle of Filth, just heard it, and it was, boom, instant click. Nice. Um, what is the coolest thing about playing in a band? Uh, probably traveling around and getting to meet new people where you go and stuff like that. Uh, showing your, your talents and your wares off to everybody and, you know, kind of getting that done pretty much. Um, what is the worst thing about playing in a band? Um, hmm. The financial burden, maybe. Uh, that's, that's a, a good uh, con to the whole thing. I mean, uh, everybody's got to pay out, you know, and pay your dues and all that stuff. And yeah, that's, pro that's probably the worst. Um, your most memorable show that you've ever played? I would probably have to say, well, between the first Promethean Horde show we played would be one, and then uh, Johnson City, Tennessee, was a memorable one. There was a lot of uh, odd uh, people there, and and uh, they were all kinds of messed up, and it was a crazy show. And yeah, it was it was crazy. That place was crazy. Um, what are your goals as a band? Uh, keep on traveling more places more often. Um, keep writing more material. Keep recording. We've already started working on another one. Our album hasn't even been out two months. We're already working on another one. Um, just keep going as, as hard as you can, I guess. Oh, yeah. Um, do you make money or lose money playing in a band? <clears throat> um, probably still lose money, but I think we lose less than some of the other bands around here. Um, just because of the way that we, uh, we uh, handle our... Uh, internal uh, band revenue and stuff like that you know rather than getting your your standard you know you get your 200 bucks at a show or something like that rather than give everybody 50 and everybody goes and buys a 24 pack of cores you know we we pull it together and, and try to make merch so we can keep revolving it get more billboards out basically definitely um, outside of being in a band how do you make a living um, well, I just started the t-shirt printing company, um, so that, that should actually help all the local and underground, you know, punk and metal bands around here. Um, aside from that, I'm actually just about to start recording the Archangel album, um, and then other than that, there's computers laying all around here. I do obvious computer repair work and stuff like that, just to time you over in between. Nice. What is the biggest crowd that you've ever played for? Um, that would probably be uh, Grand Central Miami. Uh, it was a pre-barge to help uh, party, and it was municipal waste with, uh, well, napalm death with municipal waste, and uh, that was that was a pretty big show. There was like 800 people there or something like that. Nice. Hell yeah. What's the smallest crowd you've ever played for? Chapel Hill, North Carolina, the cave. <laughs> I'll leave it at that. There's pretty much Servants of the Mist watching us. That's how our tour was, dude. There's two shows we played to like 10 people or less. Yeah, and, yeah. Uh, it happens. Yeah. You take the good with the bad. Yeah. I'm just showing that all bands are human and we're all going to play hey, some small it, shows. It was still a fun show, people. you know, yeah. met some cool people and, um, you know, got in contact with actually the owner of that venue and another one. and. They actually offered us a, a pretty good deal for the next time we come through. I, I guess they probably felt bad about the crowd or something. Mm. 
Well, you pretty much touched on it, but does your band tour? How many times have you toured? And if not, do you plan on touring? Uh, Passive Possession's only done one. Promethean Horde's done uh, two East Coast tours. Um, we definitely plan on just hammering right in through some more. Hopefully we can get on some bigger ones, um, especially with the new uh, European distribution deal we just set up. So, If you had to give a new band advice, what would you give them about being a band? What would you tell them that you need to know about being a band? Or that you uh, show up, show up to your gigs on time. Uh, don't pull the show, the the time slot, uh, time slot uh, shenanigans that I like to call it. So you know, wait till the day of the show and then call up and say your drummer can't make it till X amount of time. So you can try to strong arm somebody's slot around. Promoters hate that. Um, yeah. Uh, yeah. Show up on time. Be as professional as you can. Practice your instruments. Um, you know, pretty much. That's. That's about it. I mean, have fun, yeah. first and foremost, but but be serious about it, too, as far as the music goes. Um, is, is your family supportive of your musical career? I would definitely say so. Um, actually, I think the first time I got my drum kit set up at home, my mom actually had like a incredible toothache or something like that, headache, splitting. And she, she still was like, nah, you just keep playing, you know. And it was loud and loud, you know, two rooms over. Oh, yeah, yeah. Does your job, uh, well, you kind of do homework, but I was going to say, does your job know you play in a band and are they supportive? I, I could speak for Jack and Jesse and Gary. Um, well, Gary just got a new job, so I'm not so sure about that. Um, Jack and Jesse pretty much, yeah, they know. But uh, Jack's job, I don't know if they know exactly to the extent, you know. I don't think he's going to bring in a booklet of Passive Possession lyrics and right. check it out. <laughs> but uh, but they're, they're pretty supportive, you know. He's got paid vacation time and stuff like that that we utilize for the, for the tours. and You know, that way nobody's going more broke on right. the road, you know. Yeah, 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 totally. Um, how is your local scene uh, do you feel bands get along, or do you feel there's like a competitive nature? There's definitely uh, a little bit of both. Um, you've pretty much got your bands that get along, and they kind of click up, yep. you know. Yep. And then, uh, and then it's kind of competitive. Small, small bit of competitiveness in that those those each each of those clicks, but like. Within all the other clicks, it's it's pretty rough. There's a little bit of segregation. Going yeah, yeah, yeah. Yep. Um, what do you think can be done to help improve the local music scene? Um, not necessarily a fan of the pay-to-play stuff. I think that kind of uh, takes the integrity out of the actual musicianship. You know, because you could have a band that started up yesterday and hop on a show, and if they sell 40 tickets before you happen to, or buy 40 tickets, um, you know, they're like playing over you and they probably have no business yeah. being on the stage in the first place at that point. Um, that, that can happen, but I, I really do think that like promoters around here, people that book shows and promote, they need to do, you know, real promotion. You know, just don't send out your standard Facebook invites and, and end it there, go out, print physical stuff, get it out at the music shops, you know. Flyer like the old days? Flyer. It's, they, they still work, you know. Uh, as much as people think that, you know, social media is the way to go 100%, it's totally not. I'd say social media is probably like 40%. Yeah. Um, how did you come to play in more than one band? Well, being a drummer, and you know it just as well as I do. Being a drummer, um, no one has them. Yeah. <laughs> they they need drummers, so you know, end up session work for Imperial Conquest, Dark Faith, Past Possession, Lunar Rain, Eviscerator. You know, I was doing all those bands at, at once, uh, as well as Promethean Horde at the time. And it's just 
We also have the hunger for more than one genre of music too. Yes. And you want to kind of write music and then kind of place it where it goes. Yep. You know, like I'll write a black metal riff, it'll go to Promethean Horn, write a, you know, more death metal riff, it's probably going to go into the Paths stack, you know. Right. So, so that too. Um, do you ever have to play more than one show a night? Um, pretty much these days, anytime we like book a passive possession show, we'll probably just stick Promethean Horde on there just because why not if we're going to utilize the exposure while we can. But uh, the biggest case of that would be the uh, Dark Faith passive possession tour. I did back to back double duty drums for like 30 something shows. Nice. Oh, yeah. In a row. And it was, that was pretty tough. Well, you pretty much answered my next question, which was. Uh, man, my writing's horrible. Do you <clears throat> the issues between? Yeah, yeah. Do you have issues? Do you have... Actually, yeah. It, 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 yeah, there is. Sometimes there can be issues when you know you've got a band and you've got you know three guys that are in multiple. Um, Ulcer books a lot. We book a lot. Um, we book more out of town these days than we do now. We like to plan like maybe four months ahead and they kind of plan a little closer yeah so um we we communicate pretty well you know between Gary and Mitch and me and uh, it, it it seems to have not caused too many conflicts right now but um but I, I could see it happening you know if we got a tour booked you know four months out and then uh, yeah you know yeah That's they get offered to hop on a national and Gary's gonna be in New York, you know, that's you know that wouldn't you know work out. So I could see stuff like that happening, but um, and maybe it has happened already. But there's always you know a bright side to not playing a show too sometimes. So. No, yeah, I, I I totally get it all the time from the insubordinate guys because abortion twins is like we're always playing shows and they're like, Daniel dude, book. dude, dude, get me on a show, dude. When when can we play a show? And I'm like. <laughs> Get on your ass and book some shows, dude. Yeah, yeah. I don't know what He's the guy, man. Tell you, he man. should be out doing it. Um, I think that was it. You see anything I missed? Mm. The first part of this question seems like it's kind of answered, but as far as uh, keeping yourself from burning out. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah that's right. Um, uh,. I don't know. It's it's kind of hard. Sometimes you do overdo it, and you do kind of have to take a, you know, two weeks step back, and then just kind of think about what you're playing and stuff like that. Sometimes you, I like to call it. You know, I play RPGs a lot. I actually call that like the level up phase. You know, when you add your stats, because like sometimes you take a step back and you you, you can kind of listen to it from like an outside ear yeah. rather than sitting there hammering it out, playing it over and over again, um, and then it kind of opens you up to. Uh, maybe even progress it further. So I think the little burnouts kind of benefit you here and there, because you, you take a step back and then you come back in strong and move forward. I think that kind of helps. So as long as you don't get too burnt out where you take a five-year hiatus, right? Oh, uh, yeah. Awesome, man. Thanks, bro.